Every day, thousands of Americans cross paths with our criminal justice system. If you don't have adequate defense, you're going to jail. Every day, this nightmare happens to somebody, some, somebody who can't afford an attorney to, to fight vigorously and against everything for them. Money speaks its own language, and so does the law. If you don't speak it fluently, you can get yourself into a lot of trouble. 80% of the people who come in contact with our criminal justice system rely on the services of court-appointed lawyers. But this fundamental right is under threat. It is a fundamental right we must defend. And it all started 50 years ago with a man named Clarence Earl Gideon. You know, it would be nice to think of Clarence Earl Gideon as a romantic figure from some old-time movie with a mustache and a hat and a dashing style. Not at all. He was a beaten down 50-year-old man who looked like he was 75 and um, had, a, had the worst of life. That's what he looked like. That's what he was. On June 3, 1961, Clarence Earl Gideon was arrested in Panama City, Florida. He was charged with breaking and entering into the Bay Harbor pool room. Reported stolen, some wine, and change from the vending machines. Gideon maintained his innocence. He had no money for bail, so he was kept in the county jail for two months awaiting trial. He had no money for a lawyer either. On January 8, 1962, an envelope from Clarence Earl Gideon arrived at the Supreme Court of the United States. He asked the Supreme Court to review his case. On the grounds that I was made to stand trial without the aid of counsel. In response, the Supreme Court decided to hear Gideon's case. And since he was indigent and didn't have a lawyer, it was the practice of the Supreme Court to appoint a lawyer to represent him on his appeal. They appointed me uh, attorney, Mr. Abe Fortas. Fortas? Fortas. So from having no lawyer, he had the best lawyer in the country. Abe Fortas was a really hotshot lawyer. Of course, it was a, unusual for a person like Gideon to have a lawyer of Fortas' stature represent him. I don't know whether he recognized or appreciated that or not. Every man the rich, the poor, and the poor as well as the rich, was entitled to the benefit of counsel when he was defending himself against the prosecution by the mighty forces of the state. He summoned me to his office and he said, look, I'd like you to help me write the brief in this case. And he told me that he wanted to know everything about the right to counsel since the invention of money. He was a very, very demanding person to work for. You know, being appointed to the Gideon case was probably the, the, the best plum that any lawyer has ever, ever been given. I think every lawyer in the country would have grabbed at the chance to, to, uh, to be appointed to represent Gideon. And if someone had said, Bruce, you can, you can either represent the state and, or make the argument for Clarence Gideon, obviously I would have taken Gideon's side of the case. I think any lawyer would. Bruce Jacob was an assistant attorney general of Florida. The boss, the attorney general, gave him the job of arguing this case in the Supreme Court. He didn't expect to win. Nevertheless, he went about it in an extremely serious, dedicated way. If we should decide that, that uh, every man is automatically entitled to counsel in every single case, uh, not only will we have to give or provide free counsel to every individual in a felony case, a capital or a non-capital felony case, we will also have to provide counsel in all misdemeanor cases. We just thought the states uh, ought to be the, the place where the, this decision should be made. Um, I'm, I'm not sure I was completely sold on that. That was the argument, that was the position, position we took. Bruce Jacob requested the other 49 state attorneys general to write amicus briefs supporting Florida's position. 
The Attorney General of Minnesota led the charge, but not as the state of Florida might have hoped. We decided to solicit those same attorneys general on the side of a, an amicus brief that would say it should be a national legal principle that the right to counsel should be provided. We got a lot of support for it. This was new. This usually didn't happen. States would just duck on issues like that. In this case, uh, 22 states said, no, this should be changed. On January 15, 1963, the Supreme Court of the United States heard the case of Gideon versus Wainwright. It's an outrage. It's an outrage to try a person with, in a criminal case without giving him the assistance of a lawyer. That's just, in a decent society, you just don't do that. You don't do that. So now it's time to revisit Gideon because we need to continue to redefine what it means to have a lawyer assigned to a case and that it does not just mean having a person standing in court next to a client, but that it means having a lawyer that's competent and prepared and that believes in the humanity that's remaining in the system to be in the court and represent a client. I still think we're a great country. I think um, we just have, we have some problems in it and it has to be reformed. Something has to be done to make sure innocent men and women don't go to prison. I think America itself is an um, ever-evolving dream that we all gotta fight towards. It's no one person could do it. Of course, the Supreme Court is fundamental here because this is a constitutional principle. The Justice Department should be worried about this. State attorneys general should be speaking up for this. Uh, local leaders should be speaking up, and of course we all should. People talk about working across the aisle. I think this is a great way to do that. I, you know, there's partisanship, but there are some issues that are so important that I, I, really, I really hope that it shows that we can come together. The government, the prosecutor, the sheriff, they all have significant amounts of money. And I know that in the times when government funding is low, that they may cut corners. I would prefer that they cut corners on potholes, making sure that we have an indigent defense system that's as just as possible. So help out. Speak up. Be a force for justice.